Oh, this is the first time I'm presenting and there's only two people. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's... Um, <coughs> And so my name is Weishan. I work in Alibaba Cloud. Uh, I'm a database architect there. Um, so the cool thing about Alibaba Database Group is that our unit is actually cut across the entire Alibaba Group. So we don't just support Alibaba Cloud. We support Taobao, Tianmao, all the different business units within Alibaba. So we have like the SREs in our team. We have like the developers, the product managers. Everybody is in the same group, cut across. So this is actually quite unique within uh, Alibaba. So five things to talk about today, introduction, database overview. The first two will be a little bit of marketing. And then number three and number four will be a technical deep dive. Uh, I don't have the demo today because I just burst my benchmark limits yesterday night. Uh, so uh, I, I still have some numbers to show though. Should I stand up? I shouldn't stand up, right? Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, so... Um, Database architect used to be a solution engineer in Oracle. Then before that, I was a SRE in Global Sign. So Alibaba Cloud has actually a wide variety of uh, databases. There is the OLTP databases, the, the, the OLAP databases, NoSQL databases. Uh, one cool thing to say is that um, during Double Eleven last year, actually the entire workload was supported on Alibaba Cloud we were able to process about 500 over 1,000 orders per second. So that was quite impressive. We have different types of databases, the relational databases, the NoSQL, analytic, and certain tools. So we have, like for example, uh, PolarDB, that is for OLTP workload, is a cloud-native database. Uh, we have Cassandra, we have Mongo, so we have a partnership with MongoDB. So and currently in MongoDB 4.2, we are the only one in the world that has it. The other cloud vendors do doesn't have it. Uh, and then we have ClickHouse. ClickHouse is pretty cool. It's written by the Russians. Uh, it's a super fast uh, OLAP database, highly compatible with MySQL. These are the, all the entire uh, range of services that we have. We have PolarDB, we have the standard RDS, your OLAP, your analytic DB. You can see how all this fits into it. Uh, one cool thing I want to mention is DES, Database Autonomous Service. So this is like a service that can monitor your databases. For example, uh, if it ran out of resources, it can do auto-scaling for you. For if it can do uh, smart index recommendations, uh, it can also do things like, it, it basically the idea is to tell you that the database is going to fail before you even know that it's failed. Of course, we make a lot of contribution to the MySQL community as well. Um, there's a lot of enhancements. So we have our own version of Ali SQL. So that is a combination of all the different um, upstream contribution and the contribution from like Pocona and others. We made it into it and we contribute back to the upstream. We have a service called the Distributed Relational Database Service. So this is like a database proxy that allows you to do sharding natively. So you just configure, the, the, the proxy will, be, will know where are all the different shards and the data stored. So it just routes to it automatically. So we will open source this uh, this year as well. White papers. Um, the last, last few years we have started to release a lot of white papers, um, talking about the design philosophy that we did, why we did, how we did it. One of the things that is really cool is X-Engine. So you can think of X-Engine as a replacement for inodb in MySQL. The, pro the, the reason why we designed X-Engine is because for e-commerce workload supported by Taobao, uh, we have a very unique workload because sometimes hot data cache, hot data, cold, sorry, cold data might become hot data really quickly due to promotions and all that. And we realized that inodb couldn't, couldn't handle that kind of workload. They're switching from cold to hot uh, instantaneously. So we had to come out of our own X-Engine, uh, storage engine to do it. The other one that I'll be talking about is Analytic DB today. So Analytic DB is our own cloud native design OLAP database. So today I'll be talking about it. We released a white paper on it as well. I 
that's all for the marketing. Now it's going to go to the deep dive technical stuff. Um, so, and I think DB for MySQL has a quite a long history. It started off back in 2011. Uh, it was, it was for, uh, it was designed for, it, it was called Garuda in 2011. And after that, we realized that it's not good enough. Then we, we released a new version in 2014 called ADS and it's on Alibaba Cloud. After that, we released 2016. And today is for this analytic DB 3.0. It's 100% um, compatible with uh, SQL 2003 standards. Um, we support it. We use it during double eleven to support the uh, real time analytics for for internal business units. There are some of the features of analytic DB. One of the cooler thing is you realize is in traditional relational databases, most of the ro most of the data are stored in rows format, and it's very slow when you do things like sum or aggregation. That is why columnar database started things like um, SAP HANA. Um, they start using proposing uh, in memory columnar store. So the but the problem is those kind of databases are weak in OLTP workload. So we actually have a design that is row column hybrid. It allows you to do quick point lookups and also allows you to do uh, columnar sum or aggregation really quickly with very little overhead. Um, column joins, real time queries. Um, so we use this uh, direct acyclic graph as well. So think of it as like a map reduce kind of concept. It's a stage by stage pipelining. So in MapReduce, you have like a lot of maps, and after that, you reduce it. So for DAG execution engine, it's the same. We, s we split the workload into different nodes. Then after that, we run it stage by stage, and then finally, we consolidate the results back in the master node. So I'll start to go into the nitty-gritty nitty details. Uh, this is a architecture diagram of analytic DB. The thing that you want to see is in the storage layer, the, the, there will be a single leader and two followers. GTMs is transaction mass, uh, tr transaction management. DAG is the direct acyclic graph. WLM is the workload management. So you have a leader and followers. On the storage portion, you have the workers, workers for the for workers with leaders and followers as well. And all this are all um, sync through the rough consensus. On the resource portion, I want to touch on is that um, in the next few months, we will have, we'll be able to do kind of like a hybrid partitioning table. So you can have all the hot data on your NVMe SSD and your cold data on OSS. So, so this reduces the, stor the storage cost by quite a bit considering when you have more than 20 terabytes, 100 terabytes of data. Oh, the, the other thing I want to mention is optimizer. So we support rule-based and cost-based optimizer. You might be wondering, um, rule-based is like the design that was 20 years ago, but why do you use it? I'll explain later. Storage engine architecture. So this storage engine, we wrote it ourselves. Few things I want to mention here: um, predicate query laying la layer. Sorry, this allows you to do predicate filtering at the storage layer site. So instead of set, if you have a where clause, instead of sending the where clause to the storage and getting all the data back, it's actually able to do the predicate push down at the storage layer. So if you do a select where name equals to Wei Shan, the data that is returned from the storage back to the compute node is only where it goes to Weishan, and then you do the joins and all that. So as you can imagine, this allows you to reduce significantly, significantly the amount of data sent between the storage and the computer itself. Yeah, this is, this is really, really cool. Uh, transaction manager, so we have uh, two-phase commit, uh, MVCC for snapshots isolation. We have consensus algorithm manager, raft manager, that uh, apply the consistency across different nodes if you need consistency, if you need distributed transactions. Uh, caches, uh, we cache the blocks index partition, primary key indexes. 
and this thing here, the, the, gray, the, the, gray, the gray color thing, is actually cool in the sense where the storage portion is pluggable. So you can point it to uh, object storage, you can point it to HDFS, you can point it to, uh, I don't know, whatever file system you like, if you want to. So they're all modular. Uh, <clears throat> the next one I want to talk about is some of the optimization and engineering stuff that we did. In your traditional OLAP databases, um, Teradata and all those, they actually have the read request and the write request all served within the node. So you, you start up a Teradata service and then all the node, all, all the requests is being sent to it. So this means that when you're doing, for example, bulk loading or real-time streaming uh, at night or whatever, it will affect your read, your reporting a lot. It basically, you will have to do the bulk loading at night and then do the reporting in the morning. So this is like really old school traditional stuff, right? So what we do here is we actually split out the read nodes and the write nodes. So the read path and the write path is actually processed separately. So they never, they never have to compete for resources. And the data are all written into logs, commit logs. And imagine, like you can think of it like uh, Cassandra SST tables. They are all returned to the, SS, the MEM table and to the SST table. And then within the SST table, they do a compaction. So this is the concept is similar. But what we do for the compaction is we use parallel map reduce jobs to do it. Does really, really quickly. In the diagram on the bottom right, you can see that when a client do a select query, uh, hits one, uh, sorry, do a right query, query and it writes it to the right node. And if you want to, if it goes to the read node to do the select, so it wants to read what it just write. So there's a way to do it. You can choose whether you want to pull, the read node will pull the data from the right node if you need like guaranteed uh, session consistency. Or if, if you don't really care, you can do a bounded stillness read and then just read it from the distributed file system below. So it's really up to you. So some jobs, some, some queries, they require real-time consistency. So they have to read it from the right node. But some, they don't care. They just do it from the, from the file system itself. And you can add nodes, read nodes. Like the, the partition will just auto-balance by itself. One of the things that uh, a lot of data warehouse designers, they, they get a lot of headaches is where to put the indexes. They have to, they have to, because indexes are not cheap for writes. So whenever you put like indexes, it affects all the writes. So they have the thing like, oh, I have to put it on a primary key column. I have to put it on this column, that column. And it's problematic, right? Every time a new OLAP query turns up, and then it, it will just blows out the database because there's no index and you do a full table scan. One thing we did is indexes on every single column. So we don't care. We index every column. So whatever the query you hit at analytic DB or ADB, it doesn't matter. So you can just throw anything at it. So you don't, don't have to like think of the indexes, index it, and then you run the query. Just throw everything at it. It's fine. And we have, so for example, on the left, you have a select query that uses um, the name, the sex, the city, uh, and some JSON data type. So we, we have inverted index, bitmap in index, and all this filtering can be done at the index layer itself. So if you're doing slightly more selective query, you don't even need to hit your data files at all. Everything can be done at the index level. The filtering is all done at the, 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 the filtering is all done at the index level. This is really, really cool. I don't think a lot of other databases do this. Just now I mentioned one of the key engineering feature was the hybrid row and column storage. So we have the detail file and the metadata detail file. Think of it as, so this detail metadata file is stored in memory. There's always cache in memory or RAM. And it stores things like statistics, uh, dictionary, the, the mean size, max size, distinct count. And all these will help to do uh, column pruning during the query time. So based on all this statistic information, they know which column to prune. And so in our design itself, the data in each table partition is maintained in a single file called a detail file. And they're all separated into multiple row groups with fixed size. 
within the row group itself, the, the values from the same columns are stored together in data blocks next to each other. So even if the columns, when you need to query all the columns, they are stored in different data blocks, but they're all beside each other. So a, a disk pin itself can pick up all the, the data block by itself. So you don't need random access. Uh, it's, it's not a random access IO pattern anymore. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not random anymore. So this is like quite fast, sequential IO pattern. And you have co if you have complex data type, so on the left, you have all the data block for all the column, right? All the header, they're all fixed size. And if you have things like JSON or vectors, sometimes they are unpredictable in size. They could be 1 meg, 10 meg, 16 meg. So if you try to accommodate them in the same file itself, you, you're going to have problems because sometimes when you read a block, it's 4K, 8K, and then sometimes it's like 16 meg. So it doesn't make sense, right? So we have a uh, design very, very similar to Postgres, Toast table. So if you have JSON or complex data type, what the main file actually stores is just a pointer to, addi to an additional uh, file. So instead of storing it all in the same data, data file, data blocks, uh, it's just a pointer to an external file. So this is really quick, right? Some people might think if you index every column, when you do the writes, it's going to be very, very slow. So how do we make sure that the indexes doesn't conflict with the write performance? One of the design thing, design breakthrough that we did was we have a concept of the baseline data and the incremental data. So we have a we have a main, main, main index file, main data file, and all writes, writes to it. Maybe I just go through this. So there's incremental data and baseline data. We, we always, um, when we write, we always write to the incremental data, and then it merges back to the main, main um, data file. How we do it is this. First, on the incremental data site, we make it immutable. At the same time, in an atomic session, we create a second uh, incremental data file that accepts all incoming requests. Before, this, before the merging of the baseline data and the incremental still data is completed, all three will serve incoming requests. And once the, mergers, the merge is completed, the old data is removed. And then it's being served by the baseline data and the incremental data. Advanced optimizer. So, for example, in Oracle, they used to support uh, RBO, a rule based optimizer, until 7i or 8i. And then they start using cost base because they think that cost base is much more powerful, much more advanced, which is true. And rule base has no place in the world anymore. But we think otherwise. In a OLTP, oh sorry, in an OLAP kind of database, right? The some th sometimes you don't really need to do uh, you don't need to do planning. For example, if you want to do point lookup, you know that you're going to use the index. You don't need to plan at all. So perhaps it's better to actually just put it in the rule itself and say that oh, for point lookups or this kind of queries, don't do even do planning. Just do this way. So in in in. In, in our scenario, because we have so much users querying our ADB all the time, it doesn't make sense to do that, to waste that kind of CPU cycles for that kind of useless queries like, like uh, point lookup. So we just tell the rule and say, every time you receive this kind of request with indexes on it, just do a point, look for a point lookup query, just, just use this index straight away. Um, adaptive join order optimization. So at runtime, we will, def we will collect all the rows, and then if based on the predicate, based on the rows return, at runtime, we will decide whether we want to use this table to join this table, or A, A to join B, or B to join A. So this is quite standard optimization. Uh, parallel queries, um, MySQL 8 has it, I think. Um, yeah, so we have it as well. Partitioning, 
pruning. So if you query a where clause and a where clause is in a, for example, you query by date, and this date is in two partitions, so we just read these two partitions and the rest is being ignored. So this is very standard optimization as well. Um, one really cool thing is for this database is our optimizer, our, our execution engine is all storage aware because it's all cloud native, right? So we all know, we, we, we actually put in some smartness into the storage layer itself. So like I said earlier on, uh, there will be predicate push down, join push down, index and joins based on at the storage side. So the, 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 the optimizer doesn't even need to do all this. When it sends the query to the storage side, the storage will know and do the filtering and the push down itself. So this is, I think there's only one comp there's only one database in the world doing this right now. I think it's uh, Exadata, Oracle Exadata. They have a, it's like a single rack machine that the, the, the storage is like really expensive and it's got uh, smartness built in, it's like smart engine built in. Uh, but it's very expensive. Uh, then I'll talk a, a little bit about the execution engine. Um, we have, we use code gen, very similar to LLVM, so it's compiled at runtime, uh, SIMD and CPU cache friendly. Uh, one thing I want to touch on is the DAG engine. DAG engine was used first in MapReduce and after that by Spark, Spark RDDs. So basically it's a stage by sp stage pipelining. But the problem with MapReduce is whenever you do the multiple maps, right, it needs to hit the disk. You need to store the temporary data on the disk. And then after that, at the reduce site, you need to fetch it from the disk and then do the processing again. So you can have uh, multiple stages. In Spark, uh, oh sorry, in MapReduce, and if one is failed, then you need to do a retry. All right, you need to build in a retry logic. So in Spark RDD is the same, uh, but Spark is more powerful because you can have unlimited amount of um, stages and then you can do like whatever you want and then all the way to the end and then you do the calculation itself. And all this can be done in memory. That's why Spark is really quick. So MapReduce, Spark are all uh, different implementations of DAG's engine and we use this DAG en engine as well. The reason why I use it is because in essence, and I think DB for MySQL is actually MPP database. There are multiple nodes. The data is all fragments all over the place. So you need some way to, so you generate a, at the a optimizer side, you generate the execution plan. And this one is, this plan needs to be uh, carved out and distributed to all the different worker nodes. And so you will need an engine to do all the stage by stage calculation. And then the results return back to the coordinator itself. A benchmarks. So this is one of the benchmarks in our white paper. All this can be found on GitHub, uh, how we do the test and all this. So this can be reproduced on your own if you have doubts on it. So when you, on Alibaba Cloud Console, when you buy a ADB instance, you don't get an instance, you get like clusters of instances. There's, we call it node groups. You can have like two node groups, four node groups, six node groups. When you buy two node groups, you get uh, read uh, two node groups. One will be the read node groups and one will be the write node groups. Oh, shit, sorry. So we ran, for the white paper itself, we ran three kinds of query, a full scan, multi-table join, and point lookup. So these are very common queries that uh, data warehouse uses. Uh, it's very hard to see from there. But, okay, basically, this is trying to say that ADB performance is awesome. <laughs> so we're going to look at the white paper and um, check it out. Uh, this was a recent benchmark that we did. The, it's quite hard to tell. Um, so there's a few things to note. Um, some of the query runtime, we actually cut off at 250 seconds. Because uh, in one of the query, I think it's query two, no, uh, query one, my SQL actually took more than 10,000 seconds to run the query. So we had to cut off at two, 250 seconds. Uh, we, test this, we tested this against my SQL, Presto, Spark, and Impala. Um, we had to remove query 5, 8, 9, 18 because it hit OM in Presto itself. You can see that most 
of the comparison itself, it's we actually a lot faster. I'm talking about like magnitudes faster. Um, of course, uh, this is not 100% for Prestos and for for comparison against my SQL is not very fair. The reason is because when you buy an ADB instance, you get like two clusters, whereas in the MySQL itself, we actually create a big box that we added up all the instance CPU and put it in a single box and then do the comparison. So it's not like 100, it's not a full apple to apple, but for Spark, Presto, and Parla is apple to apple. So we, whenever we do a benchmark, we always list it down in GitHub and the script so we can reproduce it if you like. Um, uh, yeah, so I was trying to do bench demo yesterday, but I finished up my Alibaba Cloud internal test account. So I basically screw up my test account by using up all the credits. Uh, so I don't have a demo today. Um, but if you like, um, let me know. I can like, give me an email address. I can get you a test account. You can test it out. Um, yeah, that's it. I have. That's all I have. <laughs> um, yeah.